Bloody Sunday was a watershed in the already deepening conflict in Northern Ireland, the first time soldiers had shot and killed so many demonstrators. But Lieutenant Colonel Derek Wilford, head of the 1st Battalion Paratroop Regiment at the time, said his soldiers had been acting in self-defence. We went in to do a job which was to arrest people. That was our job, Th that were the orders, those were the orders which I gave my soldiers. We went in there with that intention, we fired rubber bullets, and that's all we fired until we came under fire. We then reacted in the only way possible to us, which was to return fire. A British inquiry was set up, but that was dismissed as a whitewash by many in Northern Ireland. Meanwhile, grieving and angry, Tony Doherty was growing up, convinced that his only option for justice was to join the armed struggle against British rule. So, on a January evening in 1980, he presented himself to the local recruiters of the paramilitary Irish Republican Army, the IRA. There was probably five or six of us standing in the kitchen of a house and the man asking each of us our motivation for joining up. I can't really remember what the other people said, but I assume it was, you know, to get the British out of Ireland and, and, and so on. When it came to my turn, I said that I wanted to get revenge for the death of my father. <coughs> and he said, I'm sorry, what you've just told me isn't good enough for the IRA. And I was a bit taken aback by this, because this is what I wanted to do. In the end, Tony did join the IRA, but within a year he'd been arrested and jailed for planting a bomb. He was released in 1985. By the early 1990s, though, Tony was becoming disillusioned with the armed struggle and instead turned his energies to the campaign for a second inquiry into Bloody Sunday. In 2003, Tony travelled to London for the hearings. The soldier who killed my father sat no more than 20 yards away from me, and he was asked to, to describe the circumstances in which he shot my father. I know his name. I know what he looks like. He's a man of about, I would say, 60 three, sixty-four years of age now. I don't really have any feelings towards him. No anger, Tony. I, did, I didn't really feel any anger, I have to say. I mean, I, at that stage I was would have been in my early forties and I'd spent probably too much of my life being angry about the event of Bloody Sunday and at a certain point I realised that the anger only affects me deep inside and that changes the, 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 the person that you are. It must it's, have been difficult to sit there and hear him and, and watch him and put a face to that that terrible event? It, it was very, very difficult. It was very, I mean, there it, it was a packed courtroom and there was a number of our families there who, I mean, the, the man who killed my father killed another three people within seconds. And it was very, very difficult. It was very, very emotional. It was the longest and most expensive inquiry in British legal history. The day its findings were finally released, the British Prime Minister, David Cameron, spoke to Parliament. The conclusions of this report are absolutely clear. There is no doubt, there is nothing equivocal, there are no ambiguities. What happened on Bloody Sunday was both unjustified and unjustifiable. It was wrong. The words of the British Prime Minister David Cameron at the time, I think will go down in history as, as some of the bravest words that have been spoken by a British Prime Minister in the context of an injustice that his government was responsible for 40 years earlier. You, sp you spoke of that feeling of wanting to get revenge for your father's death. That, that drove you more fervently into the ranks of the IRA. Do, do you think you've ever got that revenge, looking back now? Revenge is essentially about trying to satisfy yourself over how you've been wronged. And the case of how I would have wanted to do it in the 1980s, that was through violent means. My vengeance, in a sense, has come about very differently. And that the satisfaction that, that I have achieved as a result of overturning the injustice of Bloody Sunday has uh, become for me far more wholesome than anything I could have done with a rifle or a bomb. Tony Doherty still lives close to where the shootings took place. He spoke to Mike Lanchin in 2012 for Witness History. This is the BBC World Service. Join Shirley Gilbert as she tells the story of Jewish cultural life in Nazi Germany. In the early years of the Nazi regime, a Jewish cultural life still managed to survive. 
the Jüdische Kulturbund offered a program of theater, dance, and music for Jewish audiences increasingly ostracized from mainstream society. Music that survived the Nazis at bbcworldservice.com slash documentaries. Digital Radio Mondial takes radio to a new age. With multimedia audio, text and pictures, as well as a wide range of content, it truly is radio in the digital age. The BBC and Digital Radio Mondial. Better radio 